Welcome, Brother Hunter Spurry and Jesus at the ministry for us today. Bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I love him. I'm thankful for him. Amen. I was up early this morning talking to God. Amen. This has been on my heart for a couple of days. And this is what he laid on my heart. And I was telling Dad today what I didn't tell him what he God has been dealing with me on, but I told him this is something that's been cooking, Brother J.R. For I don't know, I've had this message for probably a good two years or three. Bless him, Lord. So it's been there a while. But I know God, you know, when he deals with me on something, I mean that's what the people need. Amen. I mean, he don't deal with me on it. I mean, he didn't send out his word void. Uh -huh. I mean, but he said it would accomplish that which he pleased. That's right. Amen. Amen. Something I mean, I was I sometimes when I'm praying for people, I just listen to God, you know, and then I speak what God says. And as we were praying for Roger, God began to show me something, and it really blew my mind. He said, because see, we quote that scripture so much, he sent his word and healed them. Yeah. And when I began to think about that, he said, you know, Jesus was made flesh, and he was the word. I mean, he was made flesh and dwelt among us. God sent his word and healed them. Amen. 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 Jesus, he sent Jesus to yeah. heal us. Amen. Right. I, and that just blew my mind. I know some people might say it's simple, but... To take a scripture out of Psalms and to take it the way God did blew my mind just right there. But we was praying for Roger and, and I just the Holy Ghost come over me so strong and I just felt like God was doing something. Amen. Because he said he sent his word. He sent Jesus Amen. just for us. Amen. Amen. He left his throne. Amen. And all the glory and all the power that he had. He left his throne. Amen. For me to be healed. Amen. He said, I don't have to go through what I'm going through. Some people can just say it's life, but I'm, it's not just life. I don't have to be like that. Amen. I can be healed because he left his throne. Amen. He sent his word and he healed them. Amen. And I'm part of them. Yes. He sent his word and yeah. he healed me, Brother Jerry. And it don't matter what comes upon me. It don't matter what I go through. But he sent his word and he healed me. And I'm thankful, amen, for what he done for me. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to Job chapter 15. This is what the Lord laid on my heart. Amen. I hope to be able to minister you the way God has brought this out to me. I don't know that I've ever heard anybody preach it this way. I've talked to... I've, I've, Heard people preach about this subject, but never preached this way. So hopefully the Lord can minister you and minister to your hearts what He's ministered to my heart. Amen. Job 15 and verse 23. One verse. When you have it, say amen. 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 Verse 23 reads like this. He wandereth abroad for bread, saying, Where is it? He knoweth that the day of darkness is ready at His hand. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. Amen. He wandereth abroad for bread. Amen. Something about the bread. Yes. There is something about the bread. I mean, there was something in these scriptures that I began to, God began to show me. He wandereth abroad for bread. Somebody looking for something, Brother Joey. Somebody anxious. Somebody hungry. Amen. He said, Where is it? Amen. Where is the bread? What happened to the bread? Where is it gone? Amen. And I, what the God has dealt with me on is where is the bread? Look at someone and say, where is the bread? Where is the bread? Amen. And we understand and we know that Jesus said He was the bread that came down from heaven that men may eat thereby and live and not die. Amen. Because of Him coming down from heaven, we can take of it, Brother J.R. Amen. And I, can, I began to think about it and God laid on my heart. He, he began to tell me that there's an importance of bread. Amen. Not only that he came, but we know from the beginning that there was an importance for bread. Now I yes. heard it blew my mind because some I've heard quoted so much about the when in Adam and all them was going on there and Jesus or God it's Jesus too, but he was talking to him there and he said, I heard people talk about working by the sweat, but that's not what it says though. But but it says, In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. Yeah. So from the beginning and, and he said Till thou return unto the ground, so I've got to have the bread. Come he on. said, In the sweat, sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground, for out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. So no matter where I'm at in life, I've got to have the bread. Yeah. Amen. And there was a man in Job wandering about abroad for bread. Amen. He was wondering, Where is it? What happened to the bread? Amen. And I began to think about. 
Brother Wayne, I'm in preachers and different things going on. This is just what God had laid on my heart. And then different preachers and how the bread just really isn't being preached anymore, Brother Gerald. The bread, and then we talk about the meat of the word, but what about the bread of the word? Hey Amen. He said that men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So I understand that I have to have the bread because that's the importance of it. He said, in the sweat of thy face, no matter where I'm at in life, no matter what I'm going through, no matter what I'm doing, he said, you're going to eat bread. Uh -huh. I'm going to have bread. So no matter what happens, he's going to provide something for me. Yes. No matter where I'm at Come in on. life, he's going to provide bread. I don't have to wonder where it's at. Come and then that was a man that was wandering abroad looking for bread. Yeah. And he said, where is it? But then it said that he knew that he knew that the day of darkness was at hand. That's talking about somebody that in the end times is going to be waiting and looking for bread because all they, the calamities have come. And then he yeah. said he would laugh and he would mock us when our calamities yes. come. So we understand that it's an importance to have bread now. Yeah. In the sweat of my face, Amen. now I'm going to eat bread. I don't want to wait until later because he said he was wandering abroad looking for bread. And he said, where is it? But he said he knows that the day of darkness is at hand. So he understood that the time was now. So if he could have just felt the bread beforehand, Sister Pam, I if he could have just got the bread before him because, see, now darkness is at hand. Yes. Amen. What did, amen. Immediately after the tribulation, yes. amen, the sun is going to be darkened. Yes. Amen. The, it, see, this is going to take place. So you've got to understand the bread is important now. Come on. There's an importance for the bread now. If you wait for the bread later, see, a lot of people is going to wait, but that's what's going to happen to a lot of people. They're going to wait all the way up until the last day. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. But if you're not already in his resurrection, if you're not already in his likeness, he Come said, whether well, we be raised in his likeness, Bill J. Orr. Amen. It's because of him. Yeah. It's all because of him. Yes. And I eat this bread. He was the bread that came down from heaven yeah. that men may eat thereby. Yeah, come on. Uh, come on. See, we, we we got to have the bread. There's an importance for the bread. Yes, they are. People's looking and wandering around. There's even people amongst us now saying, Where is the bread? Come on. Yeah. Yeah, where, where is that thing that I felt when I was a kid? Come on. Where was that thing that I heard when I was in Sunday school as a child? But it's right here today. The bread is still here. That's why it's important, by the way, that we're still preaching about the bread. That we're still... See, Jesus went about doing good. Amen. And when they were hungry, he didn't send them away. Yeah, but it said that he blessed it and he broke it. Amen. They, they had 12 fragments left after they were done. It's important that when God gives the bread, you'll never run out. God can supply. He can supply in this word. I, just like he blew my mind, by the way, when I was standing here, there was something that took place from his word. He was giving me bread. Yes, come on. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. There's bread for each and every one of us. Uh -huh. God, now there's some things I want to show you. Because God always has a way of providing bread for his people. Amen. Uh, wow. So he's not going to tell me that I'm going to, in the sweat of my face, that I'm going to eat bread and him not provide it. Amen. So no matter where I'm at in life, Brother Sam, God's given me bread. Amen. God's given me what I need. Amen. Come on. And how do I know that no matter where I'm at, what I've done, he'll give me the word, yeah. he'll give me the bread. Yeah. Because he said, David taught us, he said, now I've been young, but now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. I already feel the Holy Ghost. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, but not only that, I've never seen them begging for bread. His seed begging for bread. They've never had to wander about abroad looking for bread. They never had to say, where's the bread at? Because they always have been fed. But you know, and what did he tell us? The hairs of our head are numbered. He already knows every hair on our head. He already knows where we're at. And he knows when we need bread. He knows when we need a word of encouragement. He knows when we need fed for the same. When Lord, he said, blessed is, are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. So those that want to be filled with his bread, I mean, those that are willing to want in the sweat of thy face, Come on. those that are willing to work, Come on. Yeah. those that are willing to Come on. get dirty sometimes, yes. that he'll feed them. Yes. He'll Come give on. them what they need. That's right. Because he's not going to break what he told us. Amen. Some people look at the punishment at him. No, that's a promise to Adam. Okay, yeah. In the sweat of thy yeah. face, thou shalt eat bread. Yeah. So no matter where I'm at, that's not just a punishment, budget. That is a promise.
privilege. Come on. That's a promise. Come on. Yeah, man. That I did. Now David knew what Adam knew. Yeah. Come on, preach. David knew. He said, I the seed ain't begging bread. The Come seed on. ain't wandering up. He said, Job's right in the time. He's saying, This man is wandering abroad. Come on. Looking for bread. Uh-huh. Yeah. Saying, where's it at? But David knew that no matter where he was, his seed wouldn't be begging bread. He knew when Solomon came, he wouldn't beg for bread. He knew when Solomon's son, Rehoboam, came along, he wouldn't beg for bread. He knew his seed. I know that my children's going to have bread. I know that their children's going to have bread. Dad knows I'm going to have bread. Tell, you know daddy's going to have bread. You know uh, your seed's going to have bread. we got to understand. It don't matter where we're at. We're blessed. We have a seed. And then we're a See that has the bread. Yeah. No matter where we go, we Come got on. the bread. Yeah. But there's some right now wondering about, wondering where it's at. Uh-huh. But Jor, one time you were there wondering about. There's something different here. See Jor come out of the Methodist. He was over there, come on. and he come out of it. He was wandering abroad for bread, yeah. but he didn't wait until the day of darkness. Yeah, See, he said there's got to be more of this because when you begin to ask God, when you begin to ask the Heavenly Father for the bread, that's why Jesus came for us. Yeah, man. Was for the bread. Amen. Yeah, Come on. I am the bread of life. Come on. Amen. Amen. Yeah, he even told us, and he goes even farther, Brother Taylor, something we learn in, and then in Sunday school as a child, something we learn, we forget about, to know that he that we lost, we learned the Lord's Prayer. We know all about it. Come on. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in her earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Come on. Our daily prayer. Yeah. If you're praying this prayer, honey, you won't be asking for bread. You won't be begging for bread because you'll have it. He said, give us this day. Amen. How simple and how easy we forget about what we were taught, Brother J.R. Give us this day our daily bread. Yeah. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation. There's so much in that prayer. If we just pray it, God right. would supply. Amen. Amen. He said, teach us to pray. Teach us. Amen. He wants to let you know you've got to have bread. Amen. Come on. If you can just get a hold of the word. Yeah. If you can just get a hold of what God's taught us. Uh-huh. We got so much in his word that if we can just take of this bread, we will never, amen, Brother Sam, we'll never get hungry. We'll never go thirsty. Amen. Amen. We'll never have to wander abroad for bread and ask him where is it because I'm never going to have to ask where is the bread. I don't have to look up to heaven and say, God, where's that? Because it's a promise to me. Amen. Amen. And then we already know we can keep going back to the Old Testament and seeing God supplies bread every single time yes. that it's needed. Yeah. Yeah. And then we can go all the way back to the children of Israel and then they go across the Red Sea. Now see, they had all they needed in Egypt. Uh-huh. See, that's where people get comfortable. That old scripture they say, at ease in Zion. See, then people were okay with being in the hard bondage. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because even them hard times made them grow. Uh, Even the bondage made them grow because it says the more affliction that came upon them, the The more more they they grew. Come on, brother. But Moses seen something different. Uh So he gets the children of Israel, they take them out of Egypt. Now they had all they needed right there. Uh But they didn't have freedom. They didn't have liberty. They didn't have manna. They had spices. They had garlic. They had onions. They had this fancy stuff. But what they didn't have was manna from heaven. Now they come out. They're going into the wilderness. And after they're there a little bit, they find that water. They, they, it's, it's bitter. They turn it to sweet. Oh, they find everything. But they haven't got nothing to eat yet. He said, did you bring us out into the wilderness to die? Don't you remember we had food? We had beds in Egypt? Come on. Come on, man. Come on. But see, there was something God. See, Moses begins to cry. These people are ready to kill me. Amen. You brought them out here. Or you are, what are we doing? Amen. He said, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to send manna down from heaven. And then you're going to go out six days and get it. 
And on the seventh, you better take in extra because if you don't, come the seventh day, you won't be eating. He said, because you're not going to go out and find it. Because when you do, it's going to stink. He supplied for the people Amen. In the wilderness. Yes, he, did. he supplied for the church in the wilderness. Yes, Amen. Even though they were rebellious, the manna still fell. Even though they were complaining, even though they murmured, God yeah. still gave bread. God will still send the word your way. Even though you're in your sin, even though you're in transgression, God always sends bread when you need it. That's why it's important to be of his seed. That's why, I see, if you don't ever go down in his name, you don't never have anything, amen, to tell you what you need. Yeah. Amen. When you go down in his name, you get the bread. Come on. Come on. It's a his seed. Yes. I've never seen his seed begging bread. Now, if you're not his seed, you don't have that promise. That's why the importance of if you're baptized in his name. Yeah. Amen. Then we we understand that we have bread. Yeah. No matter. Then we're, when we're grafted into this thing. Come on. See, we weren't Jews, we were Gentiles. But now, we've been grafted in. Yes. Come on. Amen. I'm a Jew inwardly. Now I have access to the seed, Brother J.R. Amen. Come on. He said, by the Spirit... I mean, by the spirit of adoption, we cry, have a father. Yeah. I mean, because we've been adopted, because we've been grafted in. Yes. Man. Come on. Come on. Mom and dad adopted Josiah and Noah. But before, Brother J.R., they were adopted. It wasn't the same. But when they got adopted, they took on that spirit name. They got my family. They got the privilege. They got the house. They got they got everything. I mean, I had it all because I was already born into this thing. I mean, but when they got adopted, they got grafted into this thing. They said, hey, you get the bread also. I mean, I don't just get the bread. They still get to sit at the table. I mean, they still get to eat from the bread. I mean, they don't have to get the crumbs that fall from the table. I mean, but they get, I mean, just what I get. They don't have to wonder where's the bread at. Amen. Amen. Because it's theirs. Yes. When you're his seed, you don't have to worry about it. Amen. He supplies. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So even when we're complaining, I've I'm always seemed like I'm close to complaining. Come on. Come on. About any situation I get in, it gets a little bit hard, but who ain't there? Come on. Most of the time we get in a little rough spot and we start complaining. But when we come to Sunday, I'm in service, we get still get fed. Yeah, yeah man. On, we come to Wednesday and we grab the wife all day long and we come Wednesday night and still get blessed. Yeah. We still get the bread from heaven. Think about that, brother. How much he loves us and how much he cares for us that he don't want you wandering abroad for bread. Yeah, man. Asking everybody, looking to this one, looking at that. Where's it at? Because when you begin to look at somebody else and begin to ask them, they lead you the wrong way. Yeah, man. Come on. I don't have to look nowhere else. He said, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I don't have to go nowhere else. So it's important to understand. I'm not telling you to rebel and stuff because you're still going to, but the word's still going to come forth. The bread's still going to come out. He's still going to spread that table. But you're not going to be a partaker of it. If we don't learn to get over the rebellion, to get over the transgression, to get over ourselves. Amen. Amen. He'll still supply it. He'll still provide it. But you've got to learn. You've got to get your mindset out of that. Where's the bread at? That we're looking where the people, where their mindsets, where's the bread at? Who's preaching tonight? What's going on? I don't, honey, I don't care who's preaching. Somebody, but God, if it ain't through the preacher, it's going to be through a testimony. Come on. If it ain't through who's speaking that night, somebody's going to give me something that I need. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Preaching. Call the church. Daddy, worry about the bread. You'll see well, sometimes we get worried about what they're going to speak on that night. But let me tell you something. I just know that somewhere in that service, I'm getting my bread. It ain't always just right here, but somewhere, I'm getting my bread. I didn't get up and pray this morning. I didn't get up and read this morning. Come on. Come on. I didn't get up and sweat this morning. Come on. Come on. Do you hear me? Come I on. didn't get up and do these things to come here and not have my promise. Come on. Come he on. said, by, by the sweat of my face, Christ. thou shalt eat bread. So no matter if I'm getting up and I'm putting my effort in, Come just on. like Bo preached, when I put my little bit in, yeah. I'm getting Whoa. the bread. Yeah. It's a promise to me. I don't have to worry where it's coming from. I know. See, they were still looking in the world. They're still looking. Well, where's this coming from? Come they on. even began to make other gods and say, well, these are the ones that brought us out of Egypt. 
I can still sit there and think these are the ones that are sending the man down. But God was the one that was sending them. Yeah. God was providing. Yeah. And when somebody ain't thankful for what God's done for them, some people got nice homes, nice vehicles, and they don't never thank God for them. Yeah. They don't ever say thank you, Jesus, for what you give me. And that's when, I mean, you're partakers of what? The same church in the wilderness. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, you may come to church and you may partake of this bread. Come on. But the Bible even declares that your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. Amen. Come on. That's why he told us to eat the bread, the, the unleavened bread, in sincerity and in truth. So when we eat his bread in truth. And with an honest heart, in sincerity, and we do it the way God said. Come on, yeah. come on. You can still take of this bread and still die and go to hell. Uh -huh. Come on. Because they ate that manna, uh -huh. but they still died. Yeah. But see, he said, Amen. see, Amen. this chapter 6 of John tells us all about it. Yes. How about it? If we eat this bread, we're going to live forever. See, they ate manna, they still, but this bread that came down from heaven. Yeah. There's something special about this bread. That's right. This is the bread. This is just like the water that you get a drink of and you don't have to thirst no more. You, you get one bite of Jesus. And I'm telling you right now, you'll never go anywhere else because this, I mean, has life. I mean, it said that he was the bread of life. Yes. Why did he, he told us, he said he came. See, the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. But he said, I come. I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Amen. Amen. So that tells me if I'm going to get be partakers of this bread of life, I'm going to have life and I'm going to have it more abundantly. Yes. Yeah. Right, right. It says they breathed in them and they became what? A living soul. There's souls out there, but there was a living soul. Yeah. When God breathes into you, yeah. when the Holy Ghost, when the bread yeah. comes into you, when the Comforter comes into you, there's something that changes. You become a living soul. Come on. Amen. 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 Living soul. Come on. Right, Amen. We, we read in the book of Ruth. Amen. You have Ruth and Naomi. Amen. You have the husband, the two sons. You have Orpha and Ruth. Yeah. See, there was a famine. It started out with just the husband and the two boys and Naomi. And they went in there. There was a famine that came. They left their land, went into the land of the Moabites, come in there, Brother J.R., and, and then they just come out of famine. They said, we got to get, they ain't no bread here. They ain't nothing left back there for us. And then they come, and then them boys married, uh, Orpha and Ruth, and they were all just a big, happy family. Yeah. And then but one day, the husband died. And then 10 years went by, and the two boys died. So they're left to Ruth, Orpha, and Naomi, and that's all that's left. Yep. Come on. Come on. Amen. But something that stuck out to me in this story, and how beautiful the story it is, but what stuck out to me was that it said that Naomi heard that there was the Lord was given bread. Come on. <laughs> Amen. There was just a famine there, Brother Sam. Uh -huh. But when she heard that the Lord was given bread, yeah. he said he was sending bread back in that land. And she said, I'm going to go back to the land <laughs> where the bread is. They may yes. not be no bread here. Yes. I'm amongst a bunch of different gods, but i got my God with me. I'm going to go back and then where the bread is. I look at somebody and say, go back where the bread is. Oh, you can wait. Let me tell you something. You can get amen, in a church that ain't got no bread. But when you get in somewhere amen, where they got bread and where they can feed you, you begin to feel something burning on the inside. There ain't nothing like tasting, I mean, of the bread of heaven. And then she went back into that land. Because why? There was bread there. There was something for them there. When you understand the bread's what's important. There was a famine that you may not be getting bread. You may not have got it last week. But there's bread today. You may not have felt it last week, but you can feel it this week. You can go home feeling like a new person. You can go home a new creature in Christ Jesus yes. if you'll just be partakers of this bread. Amen. Come on. I mean, it don't matter what happens to us. Like I was telling you, we're his seed, so we have the bread. Uh -huh. But see, it's important to understand that even when the enemy fights us, Brother JR, it don't matter because what they do to us. Because I read a spot in Kings where Jezebel was cutting off the prophets of the Lord. Uh -huh. 
And then they were falling left and right, Brother Jr. All the men and women of God, the enemies, the enemy. Come on. Fighting against us. That sounds like today. Amen. The devil don't want you to have the bread. Amen. The devil don't want you to get. He said, blessed are oh, they. That hunger and thirst after God. He don't want you hungering. He don't want you thirsting after God's word. Amen. He don't want you in the church house. That's what Jezebel said. I'm going to cut them off. And then, but what did Obadiah do? It said he took him and hit him in the cave. Come on. And then by 50s. And then he said he fed them yes. bread and water. Yes. I mean, so even Amen. when the enemy, God always has a way of providing Come for on. his people. Yes. When the people need bread, and they may be enemies may be raging. The gates of hell may be fighting. And he said when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against us so we don't have to worry. I mean, the, well, is the bread going to be there? The enemy's here. Yeah, come on. It don't matter if the enemy's there. That's right. Amen. Because he said, I'm going to give you bread. Yes. I'm going to take you into my cave. I'm going to give you the bread that you need. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Come, on. come on. Hallelujah. He's going to hop me under his wings. Uh -huh. He's going to hop me in his pavilion. Yes. I'm going to run into that strong tower. And he's going to feed me, Bud J.R. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. Obadiah took them in there. I bet they were scared. The hive was scared on them. Scared they was going to die. Get cut off just like the rest of them. But Obadiah said, I got something. We'll do something. We'll hide you. Not only when the enemy comes, he'll hide me. And he'll feed me. He don't leave me hanging. Come on. Amen. Yeah. He don't leave me hanging. Come on. Come on. I don't have to go abroad. Where's the bread at? That's right. All I have to say is he's hiding me. He's going to feed me. He's going to water me. I mean, he's a Come good on. shepherd. That's what John 10 declares is he's a good shepherd. He don't leave his sheep astray, going astray. He gets, he goes and leaves the 99 and he goes and gets me because I'm important. He wants to make sure yeah. I'm fed. I'm just as important as you are. Amen. Amen. Come on. He wants me fed, Brother JR. Thank you, Jesus. But thank God that he's everywhere. Amen. That he can lead the 99, but yet he's still with them. Even though he's going to get me, he's still with them. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And it ain't the other part of the Trinity neither. Uh -uh. Amen. Come on, preach. Amen. Amen. He's still with me. Yeah. He never left me. He never forsook me. Amen. But he said, Lord, I'm with you always. It doesn't matter. The bread is going to be there. Yeah. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I've never seen his seed begging bread. So no matter what, I've got bread. Amen. I don't have to say where is it at because he's got it. Amen. If the church will begin to say he's got it, I don't have to worry about it. He's numbered my hairs. I mean, if he cares that much about birds, honey, he cares a lot about me. Amen. We read all these stories I've told you about in the Old Testament, but let's go in the New Testament and show you that the bread was important. Amen. Even when we're doing our own stuff, Brother JR, yeah. even when we're, we're out there doing what we think's the best. See, Jesus, they thought he was, well, we won't see him again. He's, he's gone. And then here's Peter and him on that boat out there, Brother JR, fishing, toiling all night long, didn't catch nothing. I ain't got no fish. I ain't got no bread. They're out on a boat. Amen. But they see something over on the shores of Galilee. Come on. Amen. John said. Look at that. That's the Lord. <laughs> Peter immediately jumps, girts up his fisher's coat and jumps off there and goes to see what's going on on them shores. Yeah. Come on. See, but when they get there, Brother JR, he began to, it said he gave them bread. Yeah. Come on. Amen. 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 Come on. When he got there, see, it may take a little bit of effort. The rest of them were still in the boat. Yeah. The rest of them were still fooling around with that fishing pole. I mean, but what did he do? He said, I'm going to see what the Lord's got. He said, the Lord just said, come and die. I'm, go I'm jumping off this boat. I'm going to see what's going on in yes. this house. And when he got there, he gave him bread. Yeah, come on. If you understand, when you get there, he'll give you bread. Yes. Come on. You may have to swim a little bit. You may have to fight a little bit. You may have to put on your coat for a little bit. Honey, but when you get there, he'll feed you. Yes, He'll give you your bread. Amen. Amen. I hope y'all's getting as much as I am. Amen. 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 John 6 tells us all about the bread. Amen. This is what God laid on my heart to read this. 
I mean, it's important to hear every thing that he tells us because, Brother Gerald, there's so much in this that, honestly, we have to really get a hold of it because it's so powerful about this bread. See, now, we'll read here. I'll just go ahead and start reading. You'll, you'll understand what I'm saying when I get there. The day following when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there save the one whither into his disciples were entered and that Jesus went not with his disciples into that boat but that his disciples were gone away alone. Howbeit there came other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread after that the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there neither his disciples they also took shipping and came to Ca Capernaum seeking for Jesus. When they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou thither? Hither. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, you seek me. Not, listen to this, not because you saw the miracles, not because what I'm doing, but because you did eat of the loaves and we're filled. Uh -huh. So it's important to understand, not just to serve him because he's going to supply, Brother J.R. Right. Not just to serve him because if so, we get in a hard spot, he'll pay our bills, he'll make a way. But it's important to understand to do it because of what he is. Come on. Because of how much power he's got. Yeah. Because of who he is in our lives. Because, see, they said, he said, you didn't come to, you didn't seek me because of the miracles, because what I can give to you, what I bring to you. Because I bring salvation. Because I bring the lip. But you have only come because of the loaves. Come on. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, uh -huh. which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath God the Father sealed. They, then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God that you believe on him whom he has sent. See, that tells me he sent him. They said therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then, that we may see and believe thee? What doest thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. So we understand, I just told you about that. Well, there's the children of Israel, they did have, and they had bread from heaven. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. Amen. So what was in the wilderness, and that's not what we really need. Amen. That's just the substance that was there. Amen. For them to gather and eat, and it was gone. Yeah, Amen. If you come out and got yeah. it the next day, it stunk. It wasn't no good. Amen. But this bread is the true bread that came down from heaven. Amen. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven. That's Jesus. And giveth life unto the world. So the world was dark. The world was void. The world didn't have life in it. But when Jesus came, I mean, he gave life. I mean, he gave life more abundantly. When the true bread came down from heaven, I mean, then he said it. Then they said, said they unto him, Lord, this is the kind of heart you need. Lord, evermore give us this bread. Yes. He said, now, I know our fathers did. I feel the Holy Ghost. I know our fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and they're dead. But see, you said that you were the true bread that came down from heaven. So evermore give us this bread. Yes. Now, Lord, I've got to have this bread because this bread oh. amen, is what gave life into the world. This bread amen, is oh. what makes me live yes. and move and have my being. <laughs> and Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. So if I come to him, I mean, if I come to the bread, the bread will give me what I need, and I'll never hunger again. And he that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. So I'm, I'm never going to hunger again. I'm never going to thirst again because in him I have life. Amen. Come on, preacher. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. This is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. The Jews then murmured 
at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. See, that's why people don't have life, Sister Pam, because they murmur and complain about this way. Yeah. See, but Jesus said, I'm yeah. the way, the truth, yeah. and the life. Like I told you, if you don't have his name, you'll be begging bread. Yeah. If you don't have, I mean, when we went down in the liquidy grave, we rose up to walk in newness of life. Yeah. We took on his name. We yeah. became a part of the family of heaven. I mean, and that's really the importance of it is because he said they began to murmur at him because he said, I'm the bread that came down from heaven. Come that sounds a lot like people today. Because they began to complain. They began to murmur because why? He said he was the bread. He's the life. Yes. And they said, is not this, see, this is how they're doing it. It's not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is just somebody that we know from the village. Yeah. This is just somebody we know from town. And yeah, but he is more than just a little boy running around. He is more than a man that grew up I mean, and lived and died. But he, I mean, his life, and he's life more abundantly. Yes. I mean, this ain't just Joseph's son. This ain't just Mary's son. I mean, but this was, I mean, this is God, I mean, in the flesh. This is the man that came, I mean, and lived and died that we could have life. And had it more. He came down from heaven, the true bread. Amen. Amen. See, the first time he just sent manna down. That was bread from heaven, they said. See, but this was the true bread. Yeah. That was bread from heaven, Brother yeah. Wayne. But he said, I'm the true bread. True bread. Come on. Come on. Amen. God said, I sit down my bread once, but it wasn't good enough. So this time I'm going to send the true bread. Come on. Yeah, this time I want them to feel the real life. See, they just they felt a little bit of it, but see when and that that, that kept them, that preserved life. Yeah. Come on, that's all he had done was preserved life. And then when Jesus, the true bread, came down, he gave life. Yeah, Come on. Amen. amen. That was keeping them alive. Uh -huh. And then but this bread makes me live. Yeah. This this bread gives me life. Yeah. It don't just preserve me, but it takes me on into everlasting life. It takes me into eternal life. It takes me I amen mean, where I need to go. Yes. Yes. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I lost my spot. 42. How is it that then that he saith, I came down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. Quit your murmur. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me, drawn him. So we understand he drew us one day, and then we were called to an altar, and I will raise him up at the last day. I mean, it is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God, he hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread. Listen, I am the living bread yes. which came down from heaven. If any man, it don't matter who you are, it don't matter what you've done, he said if any man yep. eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh. He said I'm giving my life that you have life which I will give for the life of the world. So he's yes. already given what we need. He came down to the bread, the true bread of heaven. He said, I am that bread of life. Amen. Amen. He gave his life. He said, I'm giving my flesh that you can have life for the life of the world. Yeah, man. Bless him, Lord. Come on. I mean, Brother Wayne said it about coming out of the world. See, because he gave his life for the world. But when you get his life in you, you're no longer partakers of the world. Yeah, Amen. When you get this bread in you, you come out from the world. Amen. You don't love the things of the world. Because, see, when you have life in you, you have his life in you. Yeah. Amen. I want him manifested in my life. Yes. Amen. And if he's in me, I've got to look like him. He said, be ye holy for I am holy. Uh, yeah. Amen. I want to look like that bread. Come on. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. They always said, you what you eat. So I guess, I mean, I guess if I'm eating bread, that means that's what I am. Amen. Oh, Come on, man. Jesus. Yeah. Amen. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? See, the people so carnal, they can understand this word. He said, then Jesus said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat my flesh. 
Eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood. You have no life in you except you have His flesh. Except you have that bread from heaven. There's no life in you. Yeah, that, just because you come to church don't mean you have life. Just because you're sitting in a pew don't mean you have life. Yeah, just man. because you play a guitar don't mean you have life. Oh. But because, I mean, you took, I mean, He said you believed on Him. You have everlasting life. I mean, I was baptized. I took on His name. I'm partakers of the bread. Come on. I'm eating the bread. He said, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man. So if I don't eat, I'm not partakers. Amen. If I don't take of it, that's the reason why he said, to do this in remembrance of me. Uh -huh. Come on. If I don't take of it, yeah. Come on. if I don't take of it, there's no life in me. Right. Amen. But there's a danger there. Because he said, if you take of it, Unworthily. You're eating and drinking damnation to your own self. Because, see, you've got to understand, see, when you come to the altar, that's where you start taking of the bread. See, but when you begin to go away from what you've taught, what you was taught, what you've been preached to, with the bread that you've had before, and begin to go against that, it's called unworthy, Brother J.R. Yeah. And unless the bread changes you, unless the bread from heaven changes what you've done, and then you can eat of this bread. You can have everlasting life and be a transgressor and be rebellious. You've got to be able amen, to eat of this bread and drink, eat this flesh, drink this blood. Yes. Because then we'll have life. That's right. Thank you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So I know when that day comes, Brother Wayne, I'm getting, I don't know about y'all, but I'm getting raised up that day. It don't, I'm going somewhere. I'm going to a city whose builder and maker is God. There ain't nothing going to hold me here, Brother He said he would raise me. If I'm eating this bread, I'm going to be raised up one day. Yes. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh, eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood who dwelleth in me. See, if I'm part of it, he, I'm in him. Uh -huh. And I in him. So he's in me. And I'm in him. Amen. So some people say, Jesus lives in me. He don't just live in me, honey. I live in him. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm complete in him. So if I, take, if I take of this bread, he's in me. And I'm in him. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father. So he's giving you an example. He said, as Jesus, as God sent me, and I live by the Father, I have life because of the Father. So he that eateth, he, that eateth me, even he shall live by me. Yeah. So because of him, that they sing a song, because he lives. Because he lives, I live. Amen. Because he breathes, I breathe. Amen. Because he's real, I'm real. Amen. Yeah. Come on. If he heals, I'm healed. He works a miracle. There's a miracle in me. Yeah, it don't matter man. what he does. I'm doing. This is a wedding. This is a this is a marriage. Yeah, man. Whatever he does, I do. Yes. Amen. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He, he just kept on saying that. He just kept on reminding them that what they had before wasn't good enough. Yeah, but when it, with the true bread, when it came down, is good. I mean, that's what you need to eat of. Amen. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples when they heard this said this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Amen. So they began to wonder. Amen. They began to go abroad saying where's the bread? Because the bread they tasted of offended them. Brother Sam, what they took of offended them. It hurt their feelings. Yes. They said this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Amen. But I guarantee you, when that dark, dark day came, Amen. They wish they would have took of the bread from heaven. Amen. Amen. That's what that that man that was wandering, that man that was going abroad for bread and saying, "Where is it?" That's the same one that walked away and said, "This is a hard saying." When Jesus knew in Himself that His disciples murmured at it, He said unto them, "Do this offend you? What and if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up?" Where he was before. What if I go from you today? How would you do it? What would you do? It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. Amen. The words that I speak unto you. They are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning. 
who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. From that time, many disciples of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Amen. And because of the bread, blood, Joe, they didn't walk with him because they couldn't eat his flesh and drink his blood. Right. Amen. Then Jesus said, he didn't stop there. He said, and Jesus said unto the twelve, will you also go away? And that's what he's going to look at you and say, or is this hard for you? I mean, this is just bread. This is just something to help us go through. This is what gives us life. This is what makes us move. Is this hard to you? I mean, and then Simon answered and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? And I got that same kind of mindset, Brother Jerry. Where am I going to go? Because in him's life. If I walk away from him, I don't have life. There's no life. He said, if you don't eat my flesh and you don't drink my blood, there's no life in you. Amen. So if I don't eat his flesh and drink his blood, I'm not partakers with him. Come on. Amen. I don't have nowhere else to go. Thou hast the words of eternal life. So if I don't have him, I don't have life. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Amen. 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 That's the bread that came down from heaven that men may eat thereby and not die. Amen. This is what he gave us. Amen. He, he said, the righteous ain't forsaken. The seed ain't begging bread. Come on. We have what we need in the bread. He is that bread Amen. that came down from heaven. Yes. Don't worry about it. Don't look somewhere else. Amen. Don't go to a different church, a different denomination. That's not going to help you. Amen. But the true bread is what's going to do it. Amen. 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 I thank you for your time. Thank Gerald for the invitation. Amen. To come minister because I always like seeing what God's going to do. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful for this opportunity. Amen. Everybody give the Lord a hand.